Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. I have something a little different for you today, and that is that Broman from Broman's Legion joins me in a discussion of Nathan Oakley's video on gravity. Now, we also have another special guest, and that's my son, Kyle. Kyle is very interested in this and wants to perhaps get more involved in the channel. So we're going to let him try it out today. So let's cue up the music and get going. Hey, what is up? I'm Broman. I run a channel called Broman Legion. I, um, I do a lot of flat earth videos myself. Um, right now I'm working on debunking the 200 proofs, um, or I, I guess 200 things Eric Dubay doesn't, doesn't fully understand. Um, but the book that every flat earther in modern day attributes their belief to, one at a time, I've gotten through maybe 35 of them so far, something along those lines. Um, I also do other stuff, though, too. I have some music, even some gaming content on my channel as well. So a little bit of a variety show. Well, you know, Chris Durham, who is uh, the author of our theme music, is actually in the chat right now. You play acoustic guitar, too, don't you, Broman? I do, yeah. I play acoustic and electric guitar, yeah. Well, maybe you two could get together because you were saying, heck, I could learn how to play this. Well, the guy that wrote it's actually in the chat right now. That's Chris Dunham Music it's Channel. Fun. It's fun. I like it. It's a lot of blues, a lot of, uh, a lot of pentatonic. It'd be real fun to play around with. And uh, we're going to get started. Now, this video is from Nathan Oakley, one of, one of my three Nathans. You know, <laughs> I've got that new series, Nathans Being Nathans. And uh, he's been featured in that along with, of course, Nathan Roberts and Nathan Thompson. But this video is called When the Penny Drops, Outer Space is Fake. So now Kyle's never really seen a Flat Earth video before, so this is going to be a new experience for him. It's one of those oh, no. life, life events that you really need to have. He sent me the uh, link to the video earlier. And I got about halfway through it before I literally just couldn't take it anymore. I ran yeah, downstairs. I, I, I just laugh. I laugh my is, ass off. Is, is, is my audio louder now? Am I being heard better now? Yeah, you're yeah, looking pretty good for me. And right. uh, your system audio looks good. Yeah, so I just got to say, <laughs> I was watching bits and pieces of this video, and I am so triggered by every tiny thing that, that this video has. It's, it's, it's unbelievable the amount of times. That you, you just want to reach through and, and, and smack Oakley, but you yeah. can't. So <clears throat> let's smack just, him like uh, a toddler, huh? <laughs> you know, something along those lines. He's uh, I, I haven't had a lot of experience with Oakley, so this is kind of <laughs> kind of a new for me as well. So. <laughs> the thing that really irritated me about the whole video is the way he literally just talks over everybody and doesn't let anybody fully explain their points and then tries to debunk yep. a half explained point. It's like, what's the point well, in that? Like, he's trying to dictate explain their thoughts and then take on that. But he yeah, just, he's trying to he's trying to dictate the flow of the conversation and redefine everything. So if there's even a split second where he thinks that you either accidentally use the wrong word or are going in a direction that works against his own personal definition, he's going to immediately stop and advantage. try to redirect it right back in. It's nonsensical. Yeah. Well, he's got a trained voice and he understands debate tactics, but. They're not legitimate debate tactics. You and I could have a debate. You and I could flip a coin and, and one of us could be a flat earther and one of us could be a globe earther. And mm -hmm. we could have a decent discussion uh, with with rules of common decency between us and, and make valid arguments to try and support them. All right. You can't do that with Oakley. No. You know, he'll use every underhanded tactic he thinks he can get away with. And while we do that, we're going to go ahead and get started with the video. I'm going to turn off my mic, cool. and uh, you'll be able to hear it on your end too, Broman. I am. Um, so I, I do think that the Earth is a globe. What's your response, Spider uh, Daddy? What's your response? If you don't have gravity as a force, then you don't have it, as in you don't have a sky vacuum. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you if you if you think well, if you're going to say gravity doesn't exist, and if that's the argument. Well, then you can't have a vacuum next to gas. You can't. But that raises another problem that, is there infinite air? Right, no, no. no. How Just, high does it go? Sorry, there, your, wait, your, so, your so conclusion, so let me get it straight. Your, your conclusion is that you can't have a sky vacuum. 
if entropy is real, which it is. And further to that, you've got some questions, correct? Yeah. Yeah, your sky vacuum's not real. I couldn't care less about your questions. We've all got questions once we find out that we've been lied to on a massive scale. Yeah, and I also... I also want to point out that I'm immediate. I'm already, I'm already angry. I'm not angry, but I'm because, because the first thing he said was, is okay. So your point is that you can't have a sky vacuum and, and, and common tactic, right? Using a common, um, using a common scientific term and just use trying to make it sound ridiculous in some way or another. So he's like, Oh, it's a sky vacuum. But he says, you are saying that you can't have a sky vacuum vacuum which is not at all what the person said, right? The person said what you just said, which is that if you don't have gravity, then obviously you don't have gas next to a vacuum like space. But Oakley immediately turns it around and mischaracterizes the argument as if somehow the guy agreed with him when he said the exact opposite of what Oakley said. So I, it's already like already crashing. There's no, there's no sentient direction in Oakley's argument from the start. So... Yeah, he instantly changed the entire point. Like, he's trying to debunk a point that wasn't even made. Yeah, that's called a straw man fallacy. That's exactly argument. what I was about to say. And, uh, you know, it's just time. it's just ridiculous. But the point that was brought up by the caller at first was really very good, and that is if there's no limit to the atmosphere because there's no barrier or no gravity holding and limiting the amount of atmosphere over the surface of the Earth, by definition, there has to be infinite air. Or we wouldn't be here. And infinite air would have infinite mass. And it's just kind of, it's a great point. I've, I've not heard that point made before. But you appreciate at a fundamental level that you can't have a sky vacuum. It stands in violation of natural law. So you now realize, understand that outer space is fake. You understand and appreciate that. It stands in violation of natural law. It stands in, well, okay. It stands in violation of natural law. That's right. Outer space is fake. It stands in violation of natural law. <laughs> well, I, okay, I so that- I've gone back. We're back to Broman right now. I've put uh, Oakley on mute for his little 90s introduction here but basically he's already trying to make the argument for the caller rather than let the caller make his own argument which is you know a typical oakley oakley uh tactic yeah he's speaking over the guy and patronizing him while he does it like he's not there for a legitimate debate he's there to talk down to somebody who has a different belief set than him and is not willing to actually, you know, back up his points. He's changing the arguments completely to something that he thinks is correct when it's just not. Well, he he says things that are fundamentally untrue as well. Like um, the argument that he, uh, the vacuum of space is in direct violation of the laws of nature, which I'm pretty sure goes back to the second law of thermodynamics argument that Nathan Thompson made at one point. Um, I think they all parrot that ad nauseum. Um, but it, it's, yeah, I mean, it's just no surprise that it's a fundamental misunderstanding of just basic things. I mean, I guess it's not that basic, but yeah, I mean, it's not, it's just, it's only from ignorance, right? I mean, there's, I don't think there's ever been a moment where these arguments get made and somebody rational goes, Oh, you know what? That's a pretty good point. I mean, on the surface, sometimes maybe, but just, yeah, I mean, it's as soon as you dig, there's nothing there. There's nothing substantial holding it together. Well, Broman, basically what's going on is they're not doing science, they're traveling. <laughs> you know? What do you mean by that? Yeah. You never saw you never saw sovereign citizens? They're not driving, they're traveling. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm oh, not I'm not a US citizen. I'm a free inhabitant under the Articles of Confederation. <laughs> right. But the, yeah. the the whole straw man thing, the whole like Yeah. Back to you what you were saying driver. earlier though. Um when I actually went out to talk to my dad when I got halfway through the video and couldn't stop laughing, that's the first thing I said is every point he's making is based on a fundamental misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. What is mm-hmm. space? Space is just the distance in between objects. Because gravity pulls all these objects together and holds them there, the space in between them is a vacuum. Gravity 
works by objects attracting to one another. But, but, you know, I'm going to need to think that up. No, you're not doing too bad with that. Yeah, I got to think up my joke. Yeah, Tessa no, no, got I, the joke. Tessa, you think you get to be a you get to be a moderator for getting my joke. <laughs> yes, I I do I do respond to flattery. All right, so let's go ahead and continue this. I'm gonna put your uh, I'm gonna put your uh, sound back on. And and explode, and the gas will go in all directions. Now we have a heliocentric model that tells us. We are a ball of gas in space. So I, I have another I have another point which I, I would like to counter the to the fact that gas goes in all directions. So you just want to totally disregard that you Oh no no, this is this is an answer to do this. Don't don't worry. So if you use if you use relative density to explain gas relative to a vacuum, then well you have a difference between zero and the density of gas. Which means that the gas would back go down. Chief, were you letting the dog in, or did you want to pause the video right there? No, no, I'm good. I want I wanted to pause the video back when he said, um, "Was that Nathan Thompson speaking, talking about the ball?" I, I was letting the dog in, yeah. But was that Nathan Thompson speaking about the the Earth as a ball of gas in space? Because when I heard that earlier, the only thing I think of was the video that you made where you showed, I think it was a bag of chips or something going up into a high earth atmosphere, expanding and exploding, which is exactly what I think that was Nathan Thompson speaking said, but he also mischaracterized earth as a giant ball of gas. Earth is a solid object yeah, it's with liquid than... gas matter. You know, it's, it's, a whole it's, 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 it's far from a ball of gas in space. I think that's an important distinction. Yeah. Even make. when you talk about like something like a gas giant, they have super dense cores. They're not entirely made of gas. So nothing is just a ball of gas in the in the universe, except maybe like a nebula. Well, you know, as as Kyle brings up, you know, we do have gas giants in the in, in our solar system. You know, for example, Jupiter and Saturn. The sun is made primarily of hydrogen and helium, which are gases. So, you know, if you want to see an example of gas without a container, all you have to do is look at Jupiter. It's a spherical planet without a container, and it's got, you know, you can clearly see at least four moons orbiting it gravitationally. And, you know, I mean, there it is right there. But, you know, the problem that you run into is that in order for gas to escape the Earth, it has to reach escape velocity. And there is a acceleration acting against that in the form of 9.8 meters per second squared towards the center of the earth that mm -hmm. slows the gas down, which wants to expand in all directions, but mm -hmm. it slows it down in the opposite direction of the force of the acceleration, bringing it down to the ground. Mm -hmm. You still have to overcome escape velocity to leave the atmosphere. And that's yep. why we still have gas around the earth. Yep. Yep. And that's another thing they misunderstand too is mass versus density. They, you know, the the gravity, the 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 amount of the gravitational effect felt by an object is directly correlated to its mass, not its density. Um, and I think that's a huge, huge fundamental misunderstanding. I'm sure they'll mention it though, so I'll save that for when that inevitably comes up. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little taste of this two-hour interview with Broman and Kyle on Nathan Oakley's latest efforts to debunk gravity. The entire interview is going to be edited and cleaned up for sound and released on my sister channel, Common Sense Science. That'll be out tomorrow, and as soon as it's out, I'll put a link to it in the description. Now, put some comments in. Would you like to see some more of Broman on my channel? And how about Kyle? Would you like to see some more of Kyle? Because he's very interested in doing a few more videos as well. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for joining me. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you wish, Patreon and memberships are available for those of you that want to support the Telescope Fund and improvements in the channel. So until we talk again, take care and stay well. Rocky.